but uh, this time uh, I am, and I'm probably at the top of the list because I, you walk into the defensive meeting room and the, the players, the engagement, the connection that they have, uh, I feel us leveling up in a lot of ways. So that's been fun for me to get started with. So uh, glad to open up with you guys and get rocking. Can you talk about the shirt and what it means to wear those shirts today? Yeah, isn't this awesome? And uh, every time we get the chance to support somebody and have their back, I think that's a really powerful moment. It's powerful in a locker room and it's powerful in a community. And it's our way of showing that support for you know men and women and children and families that uh, have had to go things that no one ever wants to go through. And so for us as a team, just to know, hey man, we got your back. That's one of the very best things that you can say to somebody uh, in a tough moment. Just sometimes words aren't right, but just knowing you're there and have support is, is an important thing. With being able to add Gilmore and just where some of your younger players are in their development. Is, is this as good of a mesh as you've had defensively in a while with, with staggering the young players on the rise and veteran influence and just guys at different phases? And I think if uh, if I was a young player, oh, we're about to have some issues, that's okay. If I was a young player, uh, let's call him Mozzie or a guy like Eric Scott, I would almost pay anything to have Jonathan Hankins mentor me. If I was Eric Scott, I would almost pay anything have Steph Gilmore meet, you know, be in the meeting room, talk about it, a technique, something to different. And so for the players who are here to take on that responsibility, knowing uh, that these guys are going to help us play and let's help them get them to our standard fast, uh, I think it speaks volumes of the locker room and the culture that Mike's created here. Because uh, think of yourself as that young player, knowing that you just almost, if you had that kind of support behind you with somebody helping you get there, uh, you'd literally pay anything for it because they've walked the walk at the highest level, and uh, they're doing a great job starting us off on that. How did you know that Steph Allen was going to be like that? Do you have that type of player, or do you not really know? Really you don't really know because every um, you know circumstance is. Uh, let's have a fight. Let's just fight it out. <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. um, the question was, did I know that about Steph? When we did sign him, uh, I bet I got ten or twelve calls or texts to say, "DQ, this is your kind of guy. You're going to love this guy." And that told me a lot about what, and then in the first interaction, just uh, knowing how hard he works at it, and then seeing the connection uh, with Trey to start, and then with some others, that was a big deal for me to see that, and to say, not only do I have all this knowledge, I'm willing to share that wisdom. And that's a really important thing uh, for coaches to do, but also for veteran ball players to do if they have that ability to share it. We have done it, uh, only once with him, but, uh, yeah, for a while we've done that, and uh, we enjoy it as the workout. Luckily, when you use the mitts, they're not fighting back as much, so we feel like we're doing pretty good. <laughs> but at the end of it, the conditioning, the hand, the feet, um, it's a big deal for an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman because you can throw seven on seven, you can get together for routes on air and get your timing down. But for the big guys, there's nothing that can simulate that. But what can simulate that is the movements and the quickness and being on offense, being on defense as a fighter, that helps. And so uh, we have a number of guys uh, that have done that this off season, both offensive line and defensive line. What did he gain from being in Austin and what is the added bulk? Have you seen the added bulk and what, how will that benefit him? Well, I'd say the added bulk is maybe not as big as we think, but what does happen usually when somebody goes to get specific on a training thing, going away, finding somebody you know that you're going to train with. There's certain parts of your development that you want. I want I want a better get off. There's something physical that you're working on. And so Micah and specifically, not only did he do that from the physical standpoint, but he also wanted to talk to guys, you know, like uh, Big Wit, Andrew Whitworth, or uh, Demarcus uh, Ware came here a few weeks ago and shared the day with us. It was an awesome day, man. It was like the example we were just speaking of, of sharing wisdom. Uh, I learned from DeMarcus that day, and I was the one, you know, there taking notes. So all those little interactions that happen uh, between ball players, where they're ready to share it back to the younger group, that's their responsibility. I said to Micah, that's, that's your job in 10 years to, to pass that along to somebody else. And that's kind of the cool part of the brotherhood of the NFL. And uh, when guys want help and assistance, uh, they usually come through for one another, whether they played for that team or not. And so for guys who are around here, like a Darren Woodson or uh, DeMarcus or Charles or one who want to lend that hand and that help, uh, that's a really cool resource for us. Micah talked about uh, the 
being excited about moving around this season. Said he'll probably play like eight different positions. Can you talk I thought about we were that? only at one position. <laughs> <laughs> so they are, yeah. No. So that, so is it eight those now? all go to Mike. So I want to make sure we're clear on that. My job is to help uh, us find matchups and Micah and others to put guys in spots where we can really allow to let them rip and kick ass. And that's been my goal all along. And so we've got a lot of unique players and how we feature Donovan and JK and Micah and Dorrance Armstrong and others that we like to move them around and then put them into different spots. The more that you do that, um, when it comes time to moving people around, it's not so complicated for us where it can cause some, you know, some disruption for the offense. And that's a lot of what it is. But I love this part of this time of year where we're learning the rookies so much to find out all the unique things that they have as well. And we'll have some more players, all right, that are moving into different spots uh, based on training camp and how that evolution goes. So we're not going to ask somebody to do something they've never done or haven't been ready for, but this is a good time to explore that. Mike, you see, said, you, you, Mike you, said the next step for Micah is opening up more opportunities for other people. Can you talk to that? Yeah. And I think, let's focus on that. Yeah. Mike knows it. And uh, talking about our big Mike. So, when you put people into different spots, uh, sometimes some attention may go to one player and now you can win somewhere else. You may show that you're blitzing, but you're really in coverage. You may show that I'm rushing, but I'm really dropping out. And how do I maneuver those players around in the different spots? Uh, that's what training and off season and in season are for and game plans. And uh, it's what keeps me up late at night, but it's also what I love to do. So it's a fun project when we can find guys that have multiple spots. What about Eric Scott has jumped out of you? We saw him against the Rebels with the first team and last week when the guys were out, you know, which is a big step for a rookie yeah. coming in, six round pick. What, is, what has yeah, he done? What I'm generally, or what we are generally looking for um, with a player coming in, when you're in line and you're kind of counting reps, okay, I think I can go here, I think maybe, when you see a guy wanting the moment to go compete and knowing that like, you know, I'm balling my fists up and say, I ain't leaving here. That's what I'm looking for specifically for the rookies to have that kind of attitude to say, yeah, I'm here and I ain't going nowhere. And that kind of mindset and attitude is really what it takes for a young player to assert themselves into these moments because that responsibility is real to say, hey man, can we count on you when it's there? And them learning to do that early on, that's a big deal. Knowing that like the amount of work that goes into it, say, I'm down for this challenge. You can count on me to get it done. And so I've seen that from Eric so far. All of the young guys are doing well, ups and downs, making some mistakes. But what we also have seen is when the light clicks on and you're able to go. I had two giant water bottles the other day and they were both full. I took the caps off and I just poured one right over the other. I said, I recognize this is your brain some days right now while we're putting in all this defense and different things to go. But you just keep fighting through it and you keep making it there. But Eric's a good example of that. And uh, Overshone's another one that has been into that space to say, I'm down for this. I want to be a part of it and I want to have a role here and I'm ready to prove that to you. So we got a lot of work to do between now and training camp, but that's a good five week window to get more training, uh, learn the playbook better. And, and I'm hopeful by the training they've put in over the last uh, month with us, will carry them over into training camp where they can really put their best foot forward to show what they got. Dan, can you tell us why you excited to call plays again? And then when you went back to calling again after not doing it for yeah. years, what was that adjustment like to get used to? It? Yeah, it's really cool to see Mike into that role. And uh, it looks, from my opinion, that he's having a blast. And sometimes as a head coach, when you're not the play caller, man, you're yearning for it to be into that space to go. And so I've you know, seen that with him, the, uh, the energy that he has for it. And, uh, it just looks like he's having a blast. So he sets the whole uh, menu and the table for us, and we've thrown a good off season. But uh, him specifically, I felt uh, some happiness and some joy uh, for him going out there. And you can see his competitive juice is going. So uh, we'll have some good battles. Yeah, uh, you excited uh, to yes, get him training camp? Yes, 100%. No question about it. <laughs> and uh, he is as well. So uh, that's kind of what makes coaching fun. You know, it's not just the, the player to player. Oftentimes, it's coaches to coaches, and uh, I've coached against Mike for a long time. He's one of the very best. So, um, hopefully, we have some uh, a lot of fun uh, out in California. We'll see you guys all there. Thank all you. right, yeah, aloha.